He went to like a group of other doctors, came back, and was like, we feel that you shouldn't run and risk injury where you got your pro day still on March 19th, so we're going to exempt you. And I was like, I mean, you're going to do better on your pro day. Oh, I'm going to kill that pro day. Oh, you're going to go home for three, four days, deload. Three, four days. And then it's grind time. Deload. All right. Hey. Boom. Boom. Let's hit it for about 20 minutes. Go ahead. Chest up, knee up, toe up. Yeah, good. Go ahead and walk it out. Walk it out. 10 yards. Shane Ray has always run. Pushing off both feet here. But never run away. Everything goes forward. Not from the pain or the name or the emptiness. Instead, he hung it on the wall and turned a father's absence into a son's purpose. He gave me the clippings to look at. That's, that's what he's most proud of. I took them and I made it my motivation. Sean taken down. Shane Ray. More pressure. There is Shane Ray. As a defensive end at Missouri last season, Shane Ray was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year and a consensus All-American. Projecting as a first-round pick, he chose to leave school after his junior year. Uh, I'm going to move on uh, to the NFL, uh, declare, and uh, forego my last season of eligibility. So it's tough being out there and oh, of course, and couldn't perform. Of course, you know I'm watching Randy Gregory and Dante Fowler and you know Marcus and Vic do drills, and them guys was out there competing to try to show you know who was the best. But I had to watch. You want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Now I got to do everything right on pro day. Again, the ever-present Wendell Ray, a junior from St. Louis, number 90. Shane is actually the second Ray to enter the draft. His father, Wendell, was an outstanding defensive end at Missouri from 1978 to 80. But after injuries derailed an NFL career, life off the field proved overwhelming, including periods of incarceration. In 1994, when Shane was a year old, Wendell walked out. I had a lot of anger towards my father. You know, I would talk to my dad, and he'd be like, hey, uh, you know, I'm coming down to see you. And he wouldn't show up. Without any real stability, divorce, bankruptcy, and then unemployment eventually led Shane and his mother Sabrina into poverty. Home became the 64130 zip code of Kansas City, known locally by another name. I remember when they were calling us Murder Factory. This is the street that I stayed on for most of my life. This is 54th and Norton. This house right here burned down. This white house, this is basically a, a vacant drug house. Like, I mean, it is. You know, right here at this corner is where I saw my first dead body up close in person. The guy was shot in the head, so, I mean, I remember everything. The violence and chaos of the streets threatened to swallow Shane. Failing in school, nearing expulsion. Uh, opened up a, a door for me. It became an outlet for me to, to channel my pain, my thoughts. It became something that I could use as a tool, and it, it really and truly saved my life. At me age, Shane grew into a defensive force, leading the school to a state title in 2009. Dozens of scholarship offers followed, but Shane knew where he wanted to go, to the school where his father played. We gave him a signing party. Dad didn't even show. On his signing day, when we got home, he cried like a baby. He said, what do I have to do to get him to love me and to recognize who, me, who I am. What do I have to do? When Shane arrived on campus in Columbia, 
he already knew how he would decorate the walls of his room. It started with, you know, hanging his clippings up on my wall. In my mind, I was like, whatever I read on here, I'm going to erase this. I was like, they're not going to talk about him anymore. They're going to talk about me. Shane Ray is an absolute monster. They did talk about him. Plenty. Shane Ray, the sack master. By the time he finished his junior year, another Ray's name was written in the Missouri record books. Being the, the Ray that they decided to talk about, instead of always bringing up my dad, you know, having my own name, being, you know, me. You hear about that story? This guy was a POW for like 15 to 20 years. And like every day while he was locked up in the camp, he would visualize his favorite hole. And so when he finally got back to the States, he went to that hole. And his first swing, he hit a hole in one at that course. That's how powerful your mind is. You visualize something long enough, you actually make yourself do it. Scouts, coaches, and executives from all 32 NFL teams were there for the biggest workout of Shane's life. But among those who'd come, there was another in the crowd. Not there to watch a player. He was there to see his son. Man, he called me. He called me this one morning. I'll never forget it. He said, Pop, I actually saw a film of you playing. And he said, I see where I got it from. I told him, I said, man, I was sorry if I wasn't there for you. He said, Pop, I love you and I forgive you for anything that you've done. You're my pop. A dream is something you, you think about a lot. But I would say a miracle is something that nobody expects to happen. It's something that when it does happen, even the person that the miracles happen to sometimes can't really embrace what's going on. I would say I'm the miracle. For the scouts, it was about the 4-5-5-40 and the explosive pass rush drills. It was a day for the prospect to shine. But for the sun, it was a day about the strength to forgive. You know you shined like the star that you is. You know, it was like this, this was... Growing up, this is what I thought it would be like. My, my father telling me he was proud of me. We're gonna see you later on, man, okay? Yes. We love you.